Everybody have a chance to take a look at the minutes? Move to approve. Got a motion to approve. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Discussion possible action. By the way, I just want to say this in case anybody was got a different agenda, it has it was changed and changed correctly online. So we're doing the budget last. We're gonna take some of this simpler stuff. Hopefully it's simpler first. So discussion possible action on claims. Claims this evening are seven hundred thirteen thousand two hundred ninety-six dollars and thirteen cents. Move to approve the claims. Second. Motion and second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, discussion, possible action on operator's licenses. Uh, tonight, you're asked to recommend approval of five regular operator licenses that are on file in the city clerk's office, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city, and successful completion of the background check for the period October 17th, 2017 to June 30th, 2019. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion and second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion and possible action on discussion and possible action. Sure. Wow. <laughs> okay. Sure on uh, third year of maintenance assessment agreement for assessment services for 2018 with Bomar Appraisal Inc. Um, we have been with Bomar for a number of years, except for the two years we went. Their proposal contract was a second, two year plus a third year if we wanted to continue the third year. So this is just staff's recommending we go with the third year. We will be bidding out for 2019. We will be needing to do a reval at that point because our equalized is enough higher than our assessed value. But So I'll this would just be for a maintenance contract for 2018. I'll move we approve uh, Bomar. Uh, appraisal Inc. for the contract of assessment services. Second. A motion second for approval. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, and uh, we get to the meat of the evening here. Discussion, possible action, or recommendation on 2018 general fund budget. Um, I emailed everybody kind of updated information on Friday and there's a hard copy on the table for everybody. Um, with that information with what I guess I'd like to do is kind of take it in sections because I think they kind of lead into each other is talk about the staff position those positions first and see where we end up after that and then talk about those few small capital projects that were proposed and then go into the you know all the individual budgets so that's okay with everybody so um, first one on the memo is community development I think I've outlined here, and Mike is here if you need any clarification, what he's proposing, the changes with the, um, the administrative assistant position was moved down to a community development clerk. That's providing some savings. Um, Mike is going to be proposing a change in the fee structure for 2018 and beyond. Um, we're somewhat behind our comparables on that. So we're estimating the net impact of, and he's requesting a planner position um, for the community development department. The net impact, as indicated, is about $43,000 after everything is netted out. So if you have questions for Mike or thoughts. Everybody have a chance to read the narrative? Yeah, I think it makes sense to me. Because it sounds like Liz was kind of doing a combination of, of those. Yes. I wasn't quite sure how the building inspections and permitting position fits in with your department or how, because you had it broken out as separate. Sure. So it's a little bit unique here in that the building inspectors, so David and Rhett, um, do our sign permit applications. They also do our fence applications. So this planner would kind of take over or would take over those two duties, which would free up some of their time to be able to, because they're already out the majority of the day doing their inspections. It's just another, um, we've had to make it work because we haven't had the staffing, but we're hopefully that this shuffling can give us the coverage that we need so that we can do those reviews. So the support person would be the person that would be doing this work? 
the planner would be doing the reviewing. The, yep. Yep. A lot of the CUP reviews, a lot of it's process stuff, you know, making sure we meet deadlines for posting, having quorums for meetings. Um, there's a lot of work that Liz, I mean, she does the work of many, many people, let's put it that way. And um, I mean, we're, we're struggling in that. It's, you know, in the last six months, that's 73 years of institutional knowledge. Let's walk out that door. With the, are the duties of this, and I, I, you know, I don't know what a planner's, you know, their uh, scope of work, but is this below what a planner would ordinarily do, or is it in line with what no, a No, it would be a plan where we'd ramp up their responsibilities and, and you know, you'd start with some of the more basic CUP reviews, um, site plan type reviews. You know, right now I do that, and then I'll at the same time coordinate all the reviews of all the other departments, police, fire, um, public works, and then, um, uh, but initially, they would start with yeah the the general basic things, and then they they'd get more responsibility as as they prove themselves. So one position less than what Liz, and then the other one is new. Liz is being replaced, but at a clerk more of a clerk level. Yeah. And so this person would do would take some of Liz's work, and then it would be mm -hmm. take some of the work away from. I'd say take the work away, but. Do some of the stuff that the inspectors are doing now and some of the stuff that Mike's doing now. And, and part of the issue is right now, too, with what we're hiring, the, the clerk position is it's a coverage situation, too, right? We've only got one person to be able to answer the phone up there. And when Liz is gone, that one person is, you know, and that person basically directs phone traffic for the utility, public works, <laughs> and building inspections, and community development. So it's, we need, we need bodies. Understood. And the impact is 90 or 43,000 net net. If you take into consideration the reduction in between what Liz was getting paid in the new position and then the and we're just estimating on the fees. We really don't know what that'll be, but you know what, what they'll be coming in for additional fees if the fee structure is changed. Yeah, there's a lot of efficiencies that we can create and now's the time to do it. And as I indicated, that's about 2.7 cents per thousand is what the mill rate impact would be. All right, I'll move to approve. If that's what we're doing. Or, or we, we can just get a consensus, I would no, say. we'll go through the whole budget. Maybe yeah. we get a consensus on things sure. and then, okay. you know, I guess if there's issues maybe that we don't agree, you don't agree on, then you could take a vote. But, I mean, I don't know, Randy, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wait till the end. I'm adding. Can you feel that? It hurts. It's, I'm adding. <laughs> so we're all agreed on this one? Yeah. I am, yes. Uh -huh. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the next one are the requests from the police department. So Marty, had a, I've got the information there. Marty had a narrative in his that I sent to you in the original packet. I better close the door. <laughs> no, we need his vote. <laughs> um, I can answer any questions. I did bring some handouts, uh, hopefully to help explain better why we're requ making this request. Uh, Lieutenant Wilms will come up here and you can hand these out. Well, that's what I got here. Yeah, but do we have the? Uh... There's a one of those. Yeah, he's going to be handing yes. out the total number of runs. Yep. So, right. calls so, and basically, the reason I'm asking, I'm asking for three patrol positions. Currently, right now, we have 25 full time sworn, which includes the lieutenant and myself. But if you break it down, uh, we have 14 patrol officers and three patrol sergeants. We have 17 officers that are basically on the street. The other eight are either investigator, school resource officers, or again, Jeff and myself. We currently work a 10 hour schedule, um, which helps us with overlap. Um, the, the problem we're running into is over the last several years, we've run into problems with maintaining a full staff. Thank you. Um, and, uh, let me grab my numbers here. In 2013, we had three officers off with injuries uh, one was for six months, the other two for three. 
We had a retirement in 14. We had two injured in uh, that year. One was out for a whole year, the other one for a month. We had two resign in 15. We had one that was injured for two months. And then we had another retirement last year, one resigned and one that was injured for eight months. So it's a continual battle. It's, I could have gone on a few more years where we're constantly short on staff. Uh, we're not maintaining that 17 person um, amount of officers that we want to have on the street. I would like to get to the point by adding these three positions, two patrol and one supervisor, of being able to have three patrol officers out at any time, all the time, 24 seven. Currently right now what we're doing is, is that most often if I've got a full schedule, we can run um, two officers during the day. Our afternoon cars come on at 11 o'clock and then depending on how many people we'll have on, we'll go to three to four officers out. Um, once um, the day cars go home at two, then we're short again, probably until the midnight cars come on at eight o'clock. We'll run anywhere from two to three officers. So if you can take a look at some of that information I gave you, I just wanna give you some numbers here real quick. If you take a look at the, um, if I can get this without it falling off on me, um, the, the bigger packet, you could take a look. I Brooke, I've given you the years of 14, 15, 16, in our current year of 2017 for the calls of service that we've gotten through the St. Croix County Dispatch Center. If you take a look at it, we're averaging about 12,000 to 12,500 calls per year. If you break that down by 365, that yearly works out to be about 35 to 37 calls a day. Now, which doesn't seem much, but if you take a look at the calls that we are taking, we're averaging anywhere from 550 to 600 accidents a year. We're averaging um, mental health cases, which we call chapter 51s. We're averaging about 100 a year for those. And out of those, we're transporting about 40 to 50 a year. And with the mental health facilities starting to dwindle, we're making more trips to Winnebago, which is down in Oshkosh, which requires two officers to go. And that's a 10 hour round trip. And that 10 hours does not include the time we spent with the person before they go down, which is anywhere from three to five hours. So one mental health case could hold an officer anywhere from 15 to 18 hours. Um, How many of those do you have, 40? I'm sorry. Did you say 40 of those? Trans 40 transports. Yeah. But uh, we're averaging about 100 of what we call, we call them chapter 51's mental health cases that we deal with. Some of them do not get transported, but we still have to respond to them. We still have to investigate to see whether or not they meet the requirements to be put on in a medical hold. Um, and that can take anywhere from two to three hours just to get that taken care of, because we have to wait for medical supervision to come from the county. They sometimes have to get cleared at the hospital. And then if they decide to set up a safety plan, then my officers can then leave that person with uh, the health fa uh, facilities, but um, anywhere from three to four hours on average before they even clear on those. Are you requiring two officers to be sent to Oshkosh? We always have two officers go to Oshkosh. Just for the simple fact is if, if I'll give you an example. We have a mental health case comes in at 12 o'clock noon, and I have a day or an afternoon car that comes on at 11 o'clock. It might not be until four or five in the afternoon before they leave to go to Oshkosh. Mm. So now it's another five hours down. That's 10 o'clock at night, another five hours back. They're putting an 18 hour, 20 hour day. I can't have one officer driving down and back uh, in that long a period of time, especially with a prisoner. And the prisoner is in the back of a squad car, leg chained and shackled, because that's how we transport them. And if they have to make an emergency stop for medical reasons, it's not feasible for me just to have one officer doing it. So that's why we sent to. And it's getting harder and harder for us to find our part-timers because they have full-time jobs. Trying to get them to come in during the uh, week to do a transport with us is getting to be very difficult as well. So my hope is, is that if we can get these extra bodies, I can have three officers available on duty at any one time so that we can hopefully cut down the amount of overtime and having these officers come in. Um, if you take a look at the other sheet that was with that, We'll break down 2016. It shows you the calls by hour. It'll be this one I've highlighted in yellow. The very bottom, that's Hudson PD. That's last year we had 12,207 calls for service. These are all the other 
agencies in St. Croix County that take calls for service from dispatch. If you could take a look at the only other agency that had more calls for service than us was St. Croix County, and they had 21,516. Our population is just under 14. They have a population of near 90 that they have to service. So we're about <coughs> 45 to 46 percent of the calls for service that they do. What's CTR? 24,000. Uh, CPR, that's the dispatch center. The center took 24,000 yeah. calls? That yes. Okay. CTR, yeah. That's the calls for service that they took in. Okay. So the rest of these are either law enforcement agencies, um, sheriff's office, or fire and EMS. So as you can tell, if you, um, this breaks it down by hours. As you can see, the busiest time of our day usually starts at about, um, really starts ramping up that 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, and then it really takes off uh, about 11 o'clock. It stays busy right up until about midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. So, if Martin, you take, go ahead, I'm the, sorry. Uh, the mental health calls that you get? Yes, sir. So they are If increasing? you look at the end of the sheet, it would be under emergency detentions. Are they increasing then? We, we've, we've seen an increase in them over the last several years. Um, like, so, okay. So how big of an increase do you think? <laughs> Um, I would, I'd have to take a look at the numbers, but I would think the amount of transports that we've been taking to Winnebago has gone up every year. I know when we first started going to Winnebago, must have been five years ago, I think we averaged three or four a year, but that's when Cumberland was still open. We were able to go over to the Twin Cities. Um, we, we do send a lot to Eau Claire. That's the next facility available to us. But if both Eau Claire facilities are full, the next option that we have is Winnebago. And I think this year, Jeff, we've gone at least a dozen times, if not more already. 15? We've already made 15 transports, and we're not even to the end of the year yet to Winnebago. Just, okay. So, but that's included in the emergency detention? Correct. Winnebago is? That is correct. All right, so, I mean, they seem to be pretty consistent right around between 98 and 100 and 203 right. calls but, per year. But what's been going up are the transports. Yeah. The 103 might include those that we don't transport that we'll do a safety plan. All right, plan. I guess that's what I was asking right. without correctly asking it. <laughs> <laughs> so our, so tran our trans transports. Our transports are going up. They, when I first started tracking the numbers back in 2008, 2009, we were averaging about 23 to 27 transports a year. We're now up in that 45 range, 45 to 50 range of transports. So over that period of time that you're showing us numbers for 14 to current, is that number increasing or is it? It's right about in that same area. It's in about that 45 40 to 47 for range. Three years. And, and it, de it just depends on, on the, how the year goes. This year it, it's going to be much higher because we made a lot more transports. Um, I think I've got to take a look at our numbers for 2017 so far. Emergency detentions. We're up to 74 for this quarter already, but I, again, we've already made 15 transports just to Winnebago alone, and I would say we've got another 20 that have already gone to another facility. So okay. we're somewhere in that. Um, so the, the number of calls that you're going on appear to be pretty consistent. Correct. Um, overall, total number of calls. And so what's driving the need for the additional? Well, the, the need for additional officer, besides not having a full staff because of due to injuries, illness, getting vacation time, is it's getting harder to get these people to their training. We have to have 24 hours of training every year. So we normally end up having to send them on their off time, which ends up costing us overtime. We have officers, several of which, and Devin can confirm this, that have maxed out their comp time, which is they get an overtime, because they, we can't give them time off. We can let one person off the schedule at a time to go on vacation, but for the most part, we're pretty much sunk on that. Currently, right now, I've got two officers off on long-term disability, um, and I'm gonna have a third one going off for a month for training, so I'm gonna be down three officers that I'm gonna have to fill with overtime, and we're just not getting caught up. Two of the newer officers that I just put on 
are now in the Army National Guard. So they're gone one week in a month, two weeks out of the year. If we get a national disaster, one of them that actually is injured was supposed to get deployed to Florida for this last hurricane, and he could have been gone 60 to 90 days. So we'd have been short. So the idea is, is to try to get our ranks in patrol up enough that when we do have these incidents come in that we can still have enough bodies on the street and we can handle the schedule, we can still get guys to training, and we can still give them their off time that you know, we're obligated to give them. The other thing with the supervisor's position I'm asking for, I currently have three patrol sergeants, one that works days and two for night coverage. If the day sergeant's on his days off, the night sergeant's on his days off, and the night, other night sergeant decides to take a vacation time, which I'm obligated to give him, I don't have any supervisors on over a weekend or over the nighttime. During the day, during the week, that's usually not more of a problem because Lieutenant Willems or myself or the, the detective sergeants around, we can take care of supervisory, but during the evenings on the weekends, we don't have that. So that was a reason that we wanted to get another patrol sergeant position in there so that we can try to have 24-hour coverage for supervision out on the night, uh, you know, night shift, afternoons, and weekends. How do you do it now? I'm sorry, I didn't How do you do it now? Currently, we don't have supervisors on. If, if we have a day sergeant that has days off, we have a night sergeant that's on his days off, because that's the way the rotation works, and the, night, the other night sergeant decides to take a vacation day, he's off, we don't have any supervisors working. We do have supervisors on call, but we just don't have anybody out on the streets working and watching the patrol guys. Marty, you, you said you're obligated to honor their vacation request, is that a union? Patrol, yes. Patrol, I have to allow one off. The supervisors, I don't, and I have on occasions <coughs> told them that, no, the schedule's too short, I'm gonna have to deny your vacation. But again, at some point, the supervisor can go, you know, it's not worth the, the hassle not being able to get time off to be a supervisor. I'm not gonna have people applying for it. So I gotta try to give them their time off as much as I can too. How long has that situation been where you haven't had somebody at supervisor at night? Oh, God, it's been going on for the last several years. Has there been any problems as a result of it? Sometimes we'll get situations where we don't I have a... one I can <laughs> think of. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's we've, a question. Yeah, well, we've had issues where there hasn't been a supervisor out that they've had to call and wake up either myself or the detective sergeant or Lieutenant Willems to come out and take care of a situation instead of having a supervisor handy to be able to answer those questions. I don't think you're even talking emergency. We're just talking about uh, general questions. management. Right. Managing your officers at night. And the problem that the county ran into a few years ago with the lawsuits that came on, they were sued for lack of training and lack of supervision. So we want to make sure that we get enough supervisors out there that are working during the weekend so that when our guys are out working, they can have somebody that can give them some guidance when they need it. So um, if you want to take a look at this other packet, the color-coded one I can give you, that's currently our schedule. If you look at the first one, and I know it's stapled at the bottom, I apologize, that's the way the copy machine did it. At the top it says current, that's our current schedule. And the numbers to your far right, let's say 10 or nine, it's everything's perfect, everybody's working, nobody's taking a vacation day, nobody's sick. That's how many people we have available for that day, and which works out great. The problem is, is that when you give somebody a day off, somebody's in training, somebody calls in sick, or you're up long term, that 10 or nine goes down to a six or seven. And we have a, we don't have a written policy on mandatory amount of people we're gonna have out. It's always been my directive, my supervisors, we will not go any lower than two officers working at any one time. We will have two officers out, no matter what. Problem is, is sometimes, in fact, we've got a schedule coming up here in November where we're gonna have three people off. I've only got five guys working, so we've gotta start filling those shifts with overtime. So How much overtime is used each year? Um, if everybody were to, we've been under budget every year, this year it's gonna be close, um, but we're right around that 55,000 range. But if the, and, that, and the reason that we're underneath that is a lot of the younger officers take their overtime and comp time. So 
they don't burn up the overtime, but if they were to burn it, we'd be anywhere in the hundred and ten to hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year range. If well, everybody were to use overtime and cash. Will hiring two patrol officers help with that? It'll cut down on that overtime amount. It's not going to totally eliminate it. Obviously we're gonna have situations that arise where we're gonna to have to fill shifts or we're gonna have people going to court or we'll have a major crime that comes in that we'll have to call people in. But it will cut down on us having to fill shifts because we're short um, officers on duty for that day. Any idea of how much percentage wise? You know, I, I wish I had an answer for you, Tom. I really don't on that. All right. Again, we have been lucky. I've been lucky that my guys have decided to take theirs um, overtime and comp time. And Devin's uh, can testify to this. We've had several officers that have uh, cashed out their comp banks 100 hours at a time. Now that doesn't come out of our overtime account, but that comes out of our regular budget. And I don't know how long that budget will last if people keep doing that. They keep burning their comp time. What do you have set aside for that? What? What do you have set aside for that? Normally we don't. I mean, normally we're okay. Close the doors back there. I'm having a hard time hearing. Jen, could you close the door? Maybe not all the way, but um, we don't necessarily budget for it. We've been okay the last several years because we'll have an officer leave and then you're hiring another officer at a lower rate than that. So we haven't gone over the last several years. But we've been lucky. But, yeah. And the thing is with the newer officers, and we've had quite a few, they don't get vacation the first year, you know, and then they get a week the second year. So, I mean, so the, a lot of them will take it in comp. And if they take off is one thing, but we've had also had some cash out, which we're required to allow them to do. And we've, we've gotten to the point where we've had to tell several officers, your comp bank is at that $200, 200 hour That's mark. That's the max they can comp is you 200. Can't, you can't get any more comp time, so you're going to have to take it and pay. So with that they have done. Marty, if you had to make a choice between having officers on the street and having supervision, what would you choose? Well, I'd have officers on the street. I, I've got to have boots on the ground. If, if I had to choose between having a, a patrol sergeant or an officer for filling one of these positions, if I could only get one, I'd want the patrol officer. But you're utilizing your sergeants as that extra officer. We are using their supervisors as extra officers. That is correct. Which is also a part of their job. Right. It is. But again, if we can, the patrol officer is more, it doesn't cost as much, obviously, on the, the budget line. We can put them basically where we want to, just like we can with the supervisors. It just seems to work out better from a, a management perspective to have that patrol position. Now, if we were to get two, I'd like to be one of them to be a supervisor. But right now, if I can, if I can only get one, I want it to be a patrol officer. Hope I explained that enough. If you get, if you get two, you want an officer and a sergeant. Correct. My biggest concern is that uh, the oversight at night and we saw the situations we've run into. We're lucky we haven't had anything worse or more severe. We, at, at night is, is important too, but also on the weekends. You know, during the week, again, there's two or three supervisors available during the day, for the most part, that we, we can take calls for, you know, give them the supervision they need. It's the weekends that we're really hurting when we only have one supervisor working, and if they decide to take a vacation day, then we're hurting for time. I guess I would be in support of possibly the one officer and the sergeant, not three. But that sounds like what you're asking for. Correct. Well, well if, besides if we, the if three. we get three, then I can get I can get to the plan of putting three officers on all the time. We have a minimum of three officers on. So regardless, you're going to come back in a six months or a year or the next budget cycle and ask for another officer or two. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Your replacement. My <laughs> I will, Randy, next budget cycle, I will not ask for any you <laughs> <laughs> But more than likely, that, that will be the scenario. It is possible, yes. Okay. Do you, uh, do those uh, the staff sergeants, do they go on those? Uh, um, on the transports? Yeah. They have in the past. When we've had to call 
in officers to go on transports, we'll put out an all call to anybody that's off that can come in. We've had them come in and take transports. Lieutenant Willems has come in and taken transports. So. Uh, I can tell you that's a statewide problem. They're trying to address it, didn't make the budget this time either. Yeah. So there's nowhere in the near future that that's gonna be solved right away. We're, we're lucky it's a, it's a straight shot on 94, but if you come from Superior and have to go all the way to Oshkosh, that's six hours. Mm -hmm. And so, that's not a lot of good roads. I assume state funding is driving them not to be able to go over to Minnesota, is that correct? No, Minnesota just doesn't have any rooms available. Minnesota They're police full. are running into the same problems that we are. Got it. There are more mental health situations going out there now than I've seen in a long time. Yep. Are they sending any over here? Not that I'm aware of. So they can't just drive through and pick a couple people up and on their way? <laughs> <laughs> we can build one here in Hudson. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I hope I answered everybody's questions. If, if not, please ask. So we're looking at a budget impact if all three were two officers and a 294,000 added to the budget. Did you break it down? 2.7? Yeah, 89, one for each, op each officer and then a 116, 567 for the sergeant. 7.2% to the mill rate. So it's 5, 11, 18.2 cents. Is that correct? Five point five for each officer, so that'd be eleven, and so it'll be eight. If all three of them were hired, it'd be eighteen cents per. What's thousand. their schedule for increases? Are they are they on an expedited schedule? Newer officers uh, for increases. The newer officers, will they come in at the the base salary, and then they don't get an increase until six months. Six months a year, and then it's an annual thing. It's an annual thing to get they up get the same increase as everybody else. Is well, in fact, are they on an accelerated no. increase for no. the first no. five years, or no? Okay. no. So they the twenty eighteen contract was settled for two percent. So they two yeah, percent. The, the whole scale goes two percent. Got it. Right. Okay. And there is some anticipated reduction of overtime. That, that is the hope. The hope is to be able to cut that down. If we don't have to be filling shifts, um, that will help out tremendously. Again, with our 10 hour schedule, we have overlap, especially from that 11 till nine o'clock at night. Yeah. We get those enough bodies in that position from that 11 till eight o'clock where the majority of our calls for service will come in. We could have four or five officers <coughs> out on a regular basis and still have enough to cover those shifts at night till six o'clock in the morning when the day shift comes on. Go ahead. I think also with that is a reduction in sick time usage, a reduction in injuries. Our guys have burnt and they're, they're working. I can't even fill shifts on overtime anymore because they just, they, they're begging for the time off. They can't, they're, they're working so much over the last couple of years. They can't, they can't do it anymore. So it's, it's, it's just as much as a physical and emotional wellness thing for them. Sure as it is for us to get the staff, because we can't even get the people on their time off to come in and cover shifts anymore. And we'd have to start forcing them and then what good is that? <coughs> so we're shorthanded. We're, we're definitely right. shorthanded. Especially on the, on the street level. We're, we're, we're as busy as the county is. I know their numbers are quite a bit higher than ours, but I think if we delved into the numbers, they're not much different than what we have. And this was presented, this packet was presented with the bottom line mill rate increase of that, what you have so here. The, what I have there does not include any of these personnel positions. Okay. So the number that I sent out on Friday does not include anything we're discussing today. It would, it would include what you got in the big packet originally, mm -hmm. but it does not include any personnel requests or any short-term capital requests. The original one? Would the one you have there that I gave you handed out tonight. Yeah, no, but the original one from my packet. Yeah, does not have the personnel. Does not. Does not. Okay. Nope. I don't know. Any comments? Anything? Well, it, you know, it, it seems evident we're shorthanded. So, how many? positions can we squeeze into the budget here um, mm -hmm. okay. to help with that problem I mean and again I, I'm with you I think two is sort of 
you know, seems to me like a baseline for True. more and more of the recruits that we're starting to see come into the police academy are also in the reserves of the National Guard. So we're going to probably see more of those people coming into our ranks than we ever have. I, at one time I had three, uh, and then one of them decided to drop out, but I still have two that are very <laughs> active in the Guard. Not to drag this up, but what happens when somebody's called to duty then? They they leave and they go to duty and we hold their place and, until they get we, back. They get their job back. They get their job back. So we're not paying them while they're on active duty. That's yes. No. 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 We're not. Okay. They get. We, I think they get. If the pay they they got for doesn't it work that if if, if the pay they get is less than what their pay is getting now, then we the make city up the makes difference. the difference. But currently, right now, both of the officers that we have are making more than they are in their current positions on patrol. So they're making more by when they're at with the National Guard or the reserves than they would here. Right. If they made less, then we would have to make up the right. difference. Right, okay. and that's probably one of the reasons that neither one of them have decided to maybe leave that and just go with us full time. Marty, if, uh, what would have the biggest impact on public safety, having two officers or having an officer and a sergeant? Would be an officer and a supervisor. It would be what? be an officer and a sergeant. That would have the biggest impact. Well, how? Well, obviously you're going to have a supervisor that's going to be out there, you know, all the time. We would, instead of having none out on a weekend, we could have at least one, if not maybe two or three, so that we've got that 24-hour coverage. So if something does go on, like, for example, we just had a high-speed chase here the other night. If we hadn't had a supervisor on that could have monitored that on the radio, followed along, and made sure everything went well, they would have had to wake one of us up. We'd have had to go downstairs, get our radio. You've got a lot of empty time that's gone on. You're going to have to try to catch up to what's going on. If something bad goes on that a supervisor could have prevented right away, the city's looking at some serious liability there. Would you, would you anticipate if there was a sergeant and an officer that the sergeant would also be patrolling? Yes. These will be patrol positions. They will be out on the street. And is a supervisor something that's legally required for a police department to have, or is it just a staffing issue? Well, it, it's not legally required to have, but you want to have enough supervisors out to make sure, make sure that, one, your officers are doing the job that they're supposed to be doing, and then to make those decisions when they have to be made. If, if a chase has to be ended, the supervisor sometimes will have to override the officer and say, listen, the chase is over, you're done. Or say an officer calls in sick, he can make schedule changes. He can do all those things that um, on duty that a patrol officer can't do. He doesn't have the authority in which to do. Okay, thanks. Sure. Anybody else? Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Marty. All right. Did you want to discuss this? Are you? Oh, you need both of us? For 10 minutes, right? Just, just after recess. They need both of us. To recess. I'll move the recess for 10 minutes, five minutes. Okay. A uh, second. No, yeah. Oh. They have to go to planning commission. They don't have a quorum without them. <coughs> I <laughs> Well, when you leave, we lose the quorum, so. Yeah. Flat tire. We just had a flat tire. <laughs> oh, man. No, we didn't take a motion to recess, did we? Well, I he didn't. made one, but I don't know if it got it seconded. Didn't or... get a second. You're bad. No. We're good. I think you seconded, didn't you? I think you're probably, yeah. <laughs> we're back. Okay, so we're back. We're back. Everything on? TV on? Okay. So where did we leave off? Uh, I guess I have a discussion on Marty's uh, request. We want to look at the whole, go through all of these first and then come back. I mean, that's up to you guys. Okay, let's take the 10,000 foot view and come back this clearly. Okay. okay. Um, the next item is public works and parks. Um, Tom is requesting another $25,000 for seasonal help. Um, with the additional parks and everything, it's just gotten really tight the last couple of years. Um, you well, know, as far as I'm sorry, I'm just going to say as far as being able to, and then you also have like once you get into fall and winter, you know, there's still things that have to be done. And we haven't filled some of these positions in a while, have we? Or is that yeah. wrong? No, 
we, they're all full. Okay. We've, we've filled them all. We've had, we, if you remember, we had a couple of part-time, and then last year yeah. we got rid of those and got a full-time. So those permanent part-time positions are gone. So this is more of the summer season will help, you know, fall, spring. Okay. And we just have been running tight on those budgets. So they, you know, asked for another $25,000. And that doesn't seem it will be a big impact to them. Well, that would be a penny and a half. Um, so that, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's just... He's just looking for some additional funding so that he can. Yeah, we talked about it at Public Works. It seemed pretty straightforward, uh, his request, I thought. So it would be for the kids that mow and clean up the ditches and, you know, as the, over the fall, and help on the street, the minor jobs, they, the skating rink when it's open, that type of thing. Um, the next one is IT. Um, Mike is out of the country and Brian had a commitment. They kind of explained it there. They're requesting a halftime position. Is this, uh, and is it currently two full time? Is that it? Currently two full time. Okay. Um, we got two full time for th three years because we had Mike for a while and then we added Brian half time for two, three years and then he became full time two, three years ago. Brian did. And how soon would this be effective? They're proposing it for 2018. J January? Yes. Okay. Is this because Mike is lessening his schedule or is this on top of more work that more? Uh, the proposal is to have two and a half positions instead of two. Okay. Now, who is in those positions is yet to be seen. What's the rationale? Oh. They just feel, well, part of it, I know that part of the discussion was the um, new utility building, you know, that there would be additional work up there. Um, well, I know um, the police department takes a lot of time from just one person. Brian does quite a, Marty? Brian does quite a bit of work. He does a ton of work in our office. Yep. When I mean, you think about just the sheer volume of devices they have, I, as yeah, it's got to be a lot of running around. You know, sure. and it, it could be a thing to, you know. I mean, and it's the case with any of these positions, not that I'm proposing this, but that it could be a, you could start it in the middle. When Rich was asking when they were proposing it, you could start it in the middle of the year, actually, with any of these. So I guess... It was my understanding that I, I obviously got this wrong, but I thought that Mike was at some point leaving here in the not too distant future and that we were bringing him back potentially for the halftime position. I didn't realize that we were adding. No, yes, it, this would be an additional position. So we would have two full time. If, if Mike were to retire, his position would be filled, and then they're asking to add another halftime position on top of that. Wow. So they're not cutting positions, they're adding. Can they contract out for the additional time? I don't have the answer to that. Is, is the newer upgrades and equipment we're getting also playing a part of that as we continue to upgrade our systems? I don't know whether upgrades provide less. I don't know enough. I, you would think less. One would think if you had better equipment that it would, but. Yeah. I honestly don't know the answer. My experience, and I'm the IT guy for my business, um, <laughs> that <laughs> I should be, I'm spending a ton more time because of upgrades, uh, uh, updates. Everyone has uh, a computer and a, uh, either a tablet or a phone, and it's just so much more technology to make us that more, you know, someone's got to help with all that stuff. So I'm not saying that this is a valid request. However, I do believe that there is a lot of time required to manage all these devices just to keep them up to date. And um, security is an issue. And, yeah. you know, so I could see, you know, they, they're probably running up against, uh, the, you know, a lot of that at this point. But I don't know. You know, and I, we have not, you know, if the concern of some of it is the utility, you know, the utilities with the new building that we have not, Brent and I have not approached the utilities about that. You know, my assumption, the way it was put in here was that this would be allocated out like Mike and Brian are. Now, if this position is going to be more focused on the utilities and the utility buildings, whether there could be a shift of those costs, but I, I don't know that. And again, the utilities has it. You know, I'm not going to say charge utilities because they haven't talked about it. So, All right, any, uh, <coughs> any ramifications here for um, benefits or anything? Well, that $35,000, they would be probably... Depending, you could, if you kept it under 20 hours a week, you could, 
you know, if, the, if you said it was a 15 hour a week position or something, then you could keep it. Right, then so all you would have would be request, the I, or I, I'm, I'm uh, presuming that a half time request a is a thousand right. hours a year. Right. I, if they work more than half, to work more than 1,200 hours a year, we have to put on retirement. 1,200. 1,200. On retirement? Right. Yes, it's 1,200 for the state. Okay. Then they have to go on retirement. And is it then 1,500 hours for health insurance? Uh, 30%. I mean, um, Elig eligible at 30 hours. 30 hours a week. Yeah. So, yeah. 1,560 okay. for the health insurance. Um, all right. So, so there would be a possibility, one option, another option could be to be make it 15 hours a week or something. You know what I mean? Cut back on the hours a little bit. I, I like your question, John, about contracting. I imagine there are people out there that have a business that contract out for so many hours per, per week or month or year or whatever with entities as opposed to, um, I don't know, how, how tough is it to bring somebody on part time? I don't know. I, I don't know that. And it under just contract, depends on I the guess. nature of the, the work. So if they're just updating computers all the time and doing stuff like that and make sure they have uh, everything going, that's a pretty straightforward deal. Um, if you're setting up public utilities to have a all their stuff running and it's different than they're doing now because they have a new building and stuff to me that's more like a project based thing where yeah. you could definitely contract that out but it wouldn't have a, a budget impact of a, a an actual sale or you know person on the payroll so one of the things I'm, at, I'm curious to know is will public IT or utilities you know that's a whole entity upon itself why wouldn't they have their own IT person I would ask but I you know it seems like we need to know a little bit more about this before uh, you know what I'm saying, right? I shouldn't ask that that out loud. Um, I can't ask that out loud. No. <laughs> well, in Brian, as Brian he said, we'll be adding a water plant, a new water building, and then he's talked about EMS and fire building, which I don't know if that'll be in 2018 or not. Um, GIS software coming on board, requires additional servers, maintenance time, and support time. Volume of support requests has increased over the last two years. Um, will continue to increase. So that's that's what his basis was for requesting a halftime position. I'm guessing when I did this calculation, it was wage and FICA, not retirement. So we would keep yeah. them under the threshold for retirement. Well, and would, is there, I, I presume there's no preference here in their request for a half-time employee as opposed to a contract employee? I can't answer that. <coughs> usually it's usually more for flexibility for a contractor. Pay but, more? Yeah, usually. But not always the case. Okay. But we're not paying the FICA. Right, none of that. So... So it's... You, you could conceivably budget... Uh, just pick a number and then that fills in for they can get however many hours they can get for that and see how that works out that's one way to go <laughs> you know what I mean you kind of it's kind of like a uh, debit card or something you can use it till it's empty and then but I don't know how that affects the budget or how it would be we would if uh, if the community development position is allowed and one sergeant when officer is granted allowed what impact does that have on our um you would be up from what you had before about 15 and a half cents so your mill rate would be at five they're just under 537 and you're at 503 with just now. those two requests with with one officer one sergeant and um, the planner so and we're at 502 right now we're at 503, correct. 503. And then... So a 30... Oops, let me put in that. You say 37? 30, 34 put cents? In the, so if you put in the 25,000 also, then we're at 538. So it'd be about 35 cents. 538? Yeah. 35 for the public works person? That includes 25 for the extra public works help. So where does that put us relative to our levy limit? And that puts us We would 
would use uh, 388,000 approximately of our levy limit. Which is? 800, just 800,000. That's the approximately total increase, annual increase plus the cushion. That is the cushion. We would use, of that cushion, we would use about 388,000. So projected out into the future as much as we possibly can, Brenda, what, is, what does that mean? So we know we have a cushion, but we're gonna be, this is operating expenses that would carry over year after Correct. year. And these operating expenses, the additional would what help? Well, we would then run out of that cushion within two years. Just for these operating expenses. Correct. Additional operating expenses. Correct. And with with um, EMS. <coughs> with the current funding model for EMS. Can the IT people have a overtime? <laughs> are you asking, no. they're, are you asking? They're both salaried because they are okay. considered exempt uh, okay. because they are the old confidential information. Right. Just, so well, so. So you're saying in two years we reach our levy limit? In 2020. 2020. Starting in budget year 2020, if everything stays the same, then we would only be allowed to increase the budget by the amount of whatever our new growth is. Okay. So at that, uh, is this including, have we included in this discussion right now with the mill rate that you just cited, are we including the market rate adjustments? Yes. Okay. The market rate adjustments, the 2% that was suggested, right. and the police settlement are already, that you already have. Yeah. So in two years from now, barring any big increase in local government aid coming from the state, um, it, we would have to, it, we would have to start having to cut the budget, all it, right? It Correct. would depend on growth. That's oh, what it would depend growth. on growth, again. Yeah, but I mean, where? Yeah. Where's yeah. growth? Yeah. What, what do you mean where? We've got all sorts of building going on. There's still uh, 22 acres and little golf course property. Yeah, but that's... <clears throat> Brenda, are you assuming a certain... I'm assuming 1.5% growth. So and this year we are at what, 1.7? 7, 7, 1, 7, 7. Even mind that for all practical purposes, single family residential is revenue neutral. And, uh, I'm not even talking about, I'm talking about commercial property up there. At Carmichael? Well, I, we haven't even seen that yet. Right. The Carmichael Ridge. And, the, you know, maybe Mike could address the future growth of the other side of Carmichael as well. I don't know if that's... But that's, I mean, sure, Mike, you can comment, but... Just the growth impression is what I'm looking for, kind of an opinion. Yeah, a lot of that will be answered when we have the wastewater treatment capacity issue solved too, right? Yeah. So we've got so much space we know how much we take in and how much we can process there's a space limitation there so but we don't know exactly what that is right and then that's part of what was approved last meeting was that study so we'll have some growth rings that'll give us an idea of where we can most effectively grow outside of our boundaries if that's what the council wants to do you know that's a policy decision a, a Growing is a policy decision if we want to grow annex. Um, I think the east side of Carmichael is obviously ripe, but I think a lot of property. that. Again, yes. Potential. We've we've ba we've we've included that in our in our in our calculations, so we've okay. already allocated capacity in the plant for that property. I would say, given that we, for conversation purposes, I guess. Given that there is absolutely no proposal for that side of Carmichael at this point, I mean that's well beyond two years from now. Any any type of realization of uh, of revenue coming off that piece of property, and plus that's going to be exacerbated, uh, mitigated any revenue, additional revenue by potentially having to increase capacity with sewer. Is that right? Right, so we're coming from a different yeah. revenue source. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm talking about increased capacity. We could We're be looking have to at increase our facility. Right, but that would come out of the sewer fund. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so it wouldn't okay. impact the general fund. That's, that's right. right. And that's the right. money's there yeah. for expansion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's some money there. Fortunately, and we've there's done some money for water and sewer deferred assessments, things like that, to impact make those improvements. Yeah. Okay. Fees. I, it, again, it's it's speculative, but I, we need that data to be able to give us a better idea timing wise. Plus, next year we'll start the comp plan process. Being as a former economic development guru, if you will, I'm not asking you to predict the future, otherwise I'd have you pick my lottery numbers, but how do you think Hudson is going to keep growing? St. Croix County going to be still growth? What's happening? We've talked about that. I mean, a lot of it's market driven too, right? We right. could hit a could have a bubble that pops you know the, the the market will will reset at some point it'll have to um but i think we've got probably of, of area to grow into and if things stayed as steady as they are right now which is really fast and accelerated mm -hmm. you know i think we're probably set for the next decade ish set what do you mean set areas to grow into. I mean, it's going to take time to go through the, you know, annexations, the planning, the infrastructure, the, all of that will take time, right? It's not, you know, from annexation all the way to a realized Project. taxable value. Sure. You know, it's, it takes time. Well, there are, there are three, three parcels that I can think of right now that would be right for annexation. Number one is Carmichael and Vine, which would likely be the next piece um, much of that some of that's retail on the corner a good chunk of that is residential on the back in the southwest corner of that lot uh, east of Carmichael again you know people keep inkling uh, but nothing solid over there and then the request for the Lee property, Lee property in the yep. south just across from the dog track yep. um, which would be Single and multiple family housing. Correct. Uh, and no retail there, though, is there? No commercial there. At least that's what from the, the discussions that, that we've heard so far. And I think the business park, and then to add on that, the business park board, I think, has been yeah. very interested, and in, in, they're almost full out there. And they have some capacity financially to, to grow um, and maybe take on some new property, acquire new property to do another phase of the, of the business park. So. so when we talk about the money that we have set aside with uh, wastewater treatment, that's for expansion of the current facility? I don't, I'm, I don't know, Brenda. That's what we're always under the assumption. Right, because as far as, from what I can tell with everything that we're talking about, that we're likely going to need a new facility. And I don't know that we have enough money put away there to buy property I, I don't and to build a brand new facility there's about four million. Oh, okay yeah it's there okay yep so it's it's not a start uh, you know start from scratch okay. and i i think the smart money is to build a second facility to offset some you know our current f uh capacity comes from way up in the hill all the way down to the bottom of the hill it's it goes right. a long way <laughs> right it'd be great to be able to offset that up and have not be putting more into the river uh, that we don't have to right all right so back to levy capacity I mean how how much do you want to roll the dice I guess that's what it comes down to uh, because what we're talking about here is eating up our uh, our cushion with operating expenses and what that means then is potentially i mean the way i look at it is two years from now rather than hoping that we've got increased revenue coming in we're looking at cutting our budget plus we've got a couple other things hanging out there right now as well with uh, <clears throat> the fire station potentially uh, obviously outside the levy limit but uh, if we borrow for it, but at the same time, it gets added into the overall no rate increase uh, the debt service. What's the typical debt service on a fire department? Hey, let's call it five million dollars. We were we five million. I don't know. Six. We were saying uh, six million was nine nine million. We said was twelve cents. Okay. This would be nine cents for six okay. million. So this isn't this isn't just a discussion, I guess, about about yeah. uh, 
mill rate increase and cushion. This is also a, a discussion, I haven't heard anybody mention it yet, about the total percent increase that our taxpayers are going to mm -hmm. be looking at from us. I can give you an easy one, the fire department, because they're looking at, I mean, that's the other one on here. They're looking at a 2% increase for the officers and for the firefighters, but that won't have a budgetary impact really because they budget a dollar amount to cover the calls. So that wouldn't have an impact. So that one's easy. I'll so throw an easy one out for you. Right, right now, with the numbers that you threw at us, that's what, like a 7%, 7.5% increase? On the mill rate? Yeah. Did you have, I'm sorry, Scott. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I kind of, if <coughs> I'm the Honorable Mayor and Finance Committee members, with the, the firefighters themselves and our officers, in the past, the only time they would get one is we, if the chief would request it in his budget. They weren't part of the city proper, the 2% or the 1% increases. And uh, it's been since 2011 that the officers have received an increase, and I think two years ago for the uh, uh, firefighters in their stipend basis. And what I'd like to do, and, and part of it is just for the ease of budgeting purposes is, what happens is we fall behind and then we kind of need to do a bigger lump sum is basically be treat them as equals to the rest of the city. If it's a 2%, they would see that. What's on a stipend might be 40 some cents. It's, it's not a lot, but then it would give them, <clears throat> over time, easier for budgeting and kind of slowly catch up. But they're not really gonna catch up, but just somewhat stay in pace and get something, rather than me coming back in three years asking for a bigger lump sum. Um, it'd be easier for me to figure out for budgeting and, and probably staff too. And the officers, like I said, it's been since 2011 since they've received any increase. So it would be nice just to actually treat them as, as equals with that. Uh, the one other thing we did add uh, was, <coughs> excuse me, is time and a half, which would be, we, which would be a stipend and a half. Um, average stipend is around 23, I think. We top out at 24 for holidays, for recognized holidays by the city. Um, I just feel that the, the firefighters kind of deserve that coming in on a holiday as, as any other city employee would. The budget impact would only be about $2,300. We did a five-year average on that. Um, and I just, I'd kind of like to see that for the, for the firefighters. So it went, as Devin said, it doesn't have much of an impact, but it would, it would be nice for us to kind of to see that. And I said, and for me, the ease of budgeting in the future with that kind of that steady increase instead of the catch-ups every so many years. Sense to me. Is there any questions? Thank to you. answer your question, that would be a seven percent increase in the mill rate. So far, yeah. with what we got here. Not right. nothing. I didn't include IT in that. That was before IT. So that would be the planner, an officer, a sergeant, and the twenty-five thousand increase in public works. And how much did you say? Uh, a six million dollar project for the fire station would increase in the rate? Nine cents. Nine cents, Nine cents. Yeah. That's down the road, I guess, but, um, okay, so uh, a 7% increase for our taxpayers so far. Um, Do we know how, what our uh, population is? Is the census population growth or you, does that include in population growth? That doesn't impact any of our revenue okay. or anything. Okay, never mind then. The only thing it impacts is the per capita for right. for ambulance. But no, I, the formula, we did, we did not get any increase, well, minimal increase in the state aid. We got the transportation aid increase and that will be for two years. We know that for sure for two years. I don't know how they calculate why we get what we do in other places as far as the shared revenue. I don't think they do. That's a big mystery. <laughs> um, just to, you know, we're talking with the capital project ones. Brenda and I may have come up with a solution that will would not impact the budget. Um, and this, that would be up to you. But the municipal court um, security measures, and that wouldn't, that will happen if it's approved would happen after the utility moved out. So it you know, might not be till oh. February, March, because then they'll shut for some offices upstairs. That and the proposed um, AC unit for the um, server room down at the um, first street building 
could potentially be taken out of the 2017 contingency because we still have quite a 40,000 know, left. So that we just thought instead of impacting the budget, we could, so that's just an option. And Brenda, I believe, talked to, Bro uh, not Brian, Brandon on the siren. And it sounds like he was willing to push that off till 19. Correct. With, with the understanding that if something happened to it in 18, then potentially you could use, you know, undesignated funds for that. But was that a new pool? I can't remember. Or yes, that. it would be a new one. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, those, we just wanted to throw that out there because I, given the situation with the rest of the budget, that um, Angela is here, the court clerk, if you have any questions on their proposal. Um, but I gave you all the documentation. They're just looking at just with just something a little more secure upstairs for them and where they, because they're kind of out in the open right now. So, what about the rest of the people upstairs? You know, <laughs> the ten, well, I mean, not to stereotype people, but the tendency would be more likely that they would have issues. And they, they have had a few issues in the yeah, past. No, I get that. I was just wondering how you, if people can get off the elevator, they're secured on one side, but not the other. They can't take it out on the court people, then they may take it out on somebody else. Well, it's a thought, you know. Yeah, I mean, you I, yeah. You know, I'm just saying. But the difficulty with, yeah. especially with the, the way it's set up on the third floor, is just it's open. There's just, it isn't conducive to, you know. We well, even have a little bit better situation theoretically here because we just have the one, but I'm not sure what you would do upstairs because it's. You'd add um, secure doors on both sides. Technic, you know, you could do that. I've seen that in a lot of places. And it's something that could be discussed. Where you have a key code for those that exist there and then you could have, because you guys have back stairways like you go up and down most of the time, right? So I don't know. I was just thinking if we're going to do this, it might want to consider having both sides. What's something we could look at, you know, down the road too, but. Well, I, you know, down the road, I don't know about safety. Is, is it something you, do you want to talk? <laughs> I mean, is it, a, is it a blaring issue where you don't feel safe in your job? Well, currently, when defendants come but, upstairs, they actually yeah, come into my office. So it's a little different than um, the other side, you know, the other side of the hall. They're actually coming into the office. We've had some situations where it, it makes it tough. For instance, I had a gentleman that um, he, he was intoxicated, but he also had a county warrant. And if they're in the office with you, it's kind of hard to call dispatch and let them know to come and get him. He's sitting right there. So there's no, no way for us to step away and make a phone call. We don't have a panic button. We don't have any way to contact anyone. Uh, <coughs> we've also had some issues where people are still, you know, in, in my office handling business. After, you know, they come in at 425 and they're still in the office with me when most everybody leaves. So there's that issue. Um, We've had people yelling up there, screaming up there. My deputy clerk sits in the middle of the floor, so this would at least get her behind a window as well. And then with moving to the utility, where the utilities offices are, it puts us right next to the stairwell and right across from the elevator. So there's a little bit less of them lingering upstairs. They come off the elevator, they handle their court business, and then they would <coughs> leave the building. So a little bit better that way. Um, North Hudson, use an example. They handle um, just a fraction of the citations we handle. We handle, I expect us this year to be at or around 2,000 citations. And they handle, I wanna say around 300 a year. And they have a security window there. And I think, I think there's pictures yep, that of that. that was in your packet. And close, so that's, we're just, we're just thinking if we're moving offices, we should probably think about what can we do to improve security since we're already moving our location? Right. Do you feel safe up there? Well, I, I mean, it just takes, just takes one person yeah, yeah. to make things unsafe. I mean, I've had, I've had I, it, there was one particular time when I had two, two gentlemen in my office after most people exited the building and they were not people that you want to be alone with in an office so yeah. and you know they I wasn't able to do what they were wanting me to do either so it was kind of a potentially dangerous situation so 
Well, the discussion was, can we do this funded in a different way, right? Right. So if we're going to fund it, let's fund it in a different way. Okay. So what I can do then with those two items, you know, we can put it on for, um, I'll put it on the next finance agenda then for discussion to do it out this year's budget then. Sure. Okay. Thank okay. You. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. And then the siren, again, I think yeah. with talking to Brandon, we'll think about that for the 2019 budget. And if something happens prior to then, which we've done before with other things, we can just address it at that time if okay. something should go wrong with it in the meantime. Okay. Okay. All right. Another consideration I, is that uh, I think you've included the Thirty thousand dollars for the library in the budget. I the budget is the library is at the same level it was last year. Last year, which was which is above the three year average. So we did we did help me with this. I think we did a five percent plus thirty thousand. Between I don't have last year's budget with me, but it was last year. Yes, at the, I believe it was at the council meeting that there was a there was a proposal was made to okay. put thirty thousand on top of the five percent. Yeah. So. So what I essentially did this year, it's the same exact number it was as it was last year. Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, you know, we're, we're, the budget right now is also including, a, you know, that same funding level where we increased again last year by 30,000. Um, we would, you know, we do have the three year average. So no matter what, we still would have an increase probably over, uh, well, maybe not with that if we take out the 30,000 or a portion of it, but um, just so you know, it's in there. Okay. Uh, I think, had, had I mentioned here before that, just as an aside, that the town of St. Joe and the village of North Hudson, or St. Joe village too, town, have not made an increase in the funding for the library in years. And in fact, both those communities are currently paying less to fund the library than they did in 2010. 2010. So the three-year average really kind of hurt us, that Band-Aid that was put in place to help us uh, get away from the exempt funding level is right now hurting us. So what are the remedies with those two entities? There are no remedies. Uh, I mean, I. You can't. Well, the only real remedy would be to expand the, the joint library, and then the county could go back to. Well, not necessarily. Enacting the tax that because the county is the only other agency that can sure. uh, uh, levy a t or put a tax on you. That we can't do that. So. Right. So when you say disband, I mean you could reduce by you know a community or two. Without, I mean, town of Hudson is still increasing, and we. I, I didn't know we could do that. I thought it was kind of an. All, I was always presented as an all or nothing no. thing to me. So, no. okay. No. But if they were not to be part of that, then they would go back to the the normal rules of a community. You pay for whatever library you go to. Everybody has a vote, though. Huh. Right. You got four communities that have a vote. And. The way I see that coming down, it'd be a two-two tie. Nothing gets done. Yeah. Um, so back to our situation, and I hope everybody, as long as we do have everybody here, <coughs> I hope everybody grasps the the uh, gravity of the situation relative to our levy limit that if we do make increases that are suggested here that we will be taking up the cushion of our levy limit within two years to thereabouts. Maybe three at the max, depending upon if we have some type of valuation increase that goes beyond what's already accounted for. Is that right, Brenda? That is correct. That puts us in an extremely difficult situation because at that point we're stuck with uh, the only levy in, in increase that we can make is based upon valuation increase, and that has been averaging. Sorry. Uh, this year was 1.8, last year was 1.9, um, but then you, we've had. Um, 
2.3, so right around those. Okay. So at that rate, that would give us consider essentially the 2% increase that we would have for staff, and then we're done. I, I don't think we're going to stop growing. I, 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 I know what you're saying, uh, and I, I just, it hasn't stopped since we started, ever since, you know, we've come out of our last recession, uh, things just can continue to roll. Now, I'm not saying but, but we should. But we're talking about valuation increases yeah, here right saying, now. Right. That's I don't, what, that's I don't think we're we're, the growth thing is going to stop. I think we're still going to be able to increase our levy based on growth. And we probably don't agree on that, but. Um, no, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know that I agree or disagree. I just don't know that I want to gamble that. I, I don't know if I feel like I'm gambling here either. I, I, what I um, see here in front of us are some choices, and I don't think we should honor all these requests. Um, I, to me, it's coming down to I strongly feel that we need to continue to invest in our police department because uh, we do have a group of people that are, you know, they're running hard and uh, they are needing more help. So community development, that's kind of, we are obviously uh, a position that's leaving our, that's pretty important as well. Public works, that's not a huge budget impact. Um, these are the kind of things that I, I, I don't see that's gonna totally um, hit the ceiling. We have other things we have to look at as well, including EMS and other things coming down the pike, but I don't suggest we, 800,000 is the, the, the ceiling, right? The yeah. cushion. Yeah. So maybe we go for half of that or something. Well, that's but where we're at. <laughs> that, I we're at about 40% yeah. right now. We're at, we're at about 40% of that, so. Is that 40% without these? Or no, that includes these, includes right? These? Yeah. So it, I believe we're at about 170,000. Is that the number? If we were just look, if we were just to go with our growth this year, if you know, just to stay with what the levy limit growth was, I think it was 160 or 170 thousand. So that would, when you got down to 2020 or 2021, that could potentially what you'd be looking at for available expenditure increases, because you'd be limited to that. But again, we, all the numbers are we don't know what they're going to be. You know, I, um, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. <laughs> I just don't see where the growth is coming. I don't know where, I mean, where, where is it going to happen? It's going to come on the hill. And it's going to come through annexation. And even uh, Mike was saying, you know, it, it's how we choose to grow that will impact how we grow. We could say, well, we're not going to do any of that, and we're not going to, you know, go for that, and we're not going to build a new wastewater treatment plant. That would kill our growth right there. That would, that's an automatic, yeah, you know, yeah. that's an automatic way of saying we're not going to grow. But if we continue to invest in infrastructure and things, then we can continue to grow to the east and to the south and to the north, um, to a degree. Well, like I said, I've, I've, I know that we've identified three properties where there is possible annexation, two for sure. Uh, I don't know about east of Carmichael because that's just a wild card, especially given the DOT's coming in and taking 30 acres of that exit ramp. And I think that stalled the conversation with Walmart. So I just, I, can't, I wouldn't even identify that piece of property right now as, as potential annexation, but I do know the two. One would have some retail and the other portion housing. And again, housing is, is revenue neutral. Uh, the other, the other piece is south of us to the west along the bank there, and uh, and again that's residential. Single family isn't going to be, you know, that much of a, a growth driving factor, but multifamily over there potentially, yeah, to some extent, but not a great extent. And after that, I just don't see it. I mean, yeah, there is potential out there, sure, but nothing that's there is no conversation out there. So if let's just say that the business park were to annex. Um, they're sitting on a good bundle of money right now that they could use to uh, purchase property and an exit. But that's way off. I mean, that's uh, any type of development is still years away. And so I, 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 again, I just don't see the opportunity for great growth that could help offset some of this. So I've just, my, you know, just so that we, we know what we're walking into here. There's a potential that, that 
we could be at levy limits in a couple of years and then and for operating expenses and then we're going to have to we've got some serious decisions ahead of us you know we've said that for i, I don't want to interrupt no i'm done i'm done go ahead we've said it for 14 years that i've been sitting here and i think that it, i've been through the peaks and the valleys and we've been able to i think conservatively and uh, financially protect what we've given the citizens but the growing pains are going to hurt, and now we're coming up against where we are kind of flush, if you will. Well, but the growing pains, we were maybe not fast enough, we couldn't, or too slow to react to adding those other officers or adding this or that and the other thing. It, it, it's a tough, it's tough to say, but we, I think we don't have a choice in some of these areas of spending. I know we've made choices before where we've had a cut budgets, no raises, <coughs> uh, eliminated positions. It's been done before and we've come out of it. So I guess I'm more optimistic like what, what John would say and I feel a little more comforted with what Mike said, but I see it and you know, trying to be as fiscally responsible as possible, but we have to move forward with the growth and I know you understand that, I get it. I get it, and I get your point as well. I, I think it's time that we, uh, not time, but I think we don't have a choice. We're going to have to. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying we can't spend money here or shouldn't spend money. No, I do. I hear what you're saying about I'm just exasperating the, the levy. But I, I'd like to believe I'm optimistic enough to say that we're going to go through it and we'll get through it yeah. in a positive manner. Yeah, well. Again, you know, like you say, we've had we've definitely had room for growth. Business Park is just about full. Mm -hmm. Like you say, we're almost flush now. Where before, over the past 14 years, we weren't. We had opportunity for Correct. growth, and I'm just not seeing that staring us in the face right now. Uh, and I am an optimist, and so I just, but I, you know, as we make these decisions, we have to be well aware that uh, in a couple of years we may have to revisit a lot of this stuff. And there is no question. The need was expressed by our chief for additional police. I'm not going to argue with that one bit. I think that makes what everything the case that he's making is a sound case. Uh, I think Mike makes a sound case for help, especially given what we're looking at. I mean, there's no question we have the potential of the dog track, right? right? But that's a ways down the road, and that will be that will be a, a significant amount of money coming our way. But that's in the TIF for now. That's right. The Correct. And the same thing with, uh, with the proposed Girard uh, development, uh, the same thing. Um, it could be a, a, you know, a nice chunk of revenue coming here, but that's, that's a ways off. Uh, and again, the business park, I have a lot of confidence that they're going to um, expand, purchase property, um, get it ready for development and sell it. But again, that's a ways off. So. Uh, we definitely have a bright future down the road, revenue-wise. Yeah. That's going to be coming in. So, uh, I really think we're feeling the growing pains of a, of a vibrant community. Uh, well, I guess it's time to address it harder. Yeah. Were there any? I mean, moving. I mean, we're still talking to this, but any other questions on the department? The regular budgets that came through from the departments, you know, that initial big packet I sent. Overall, the big question I had on mostly everyone was, why is everything increased and basically because of the adjustments? Some of the market, there's market adjustments. Um, that's the bulk of it, you know, and not all of the market adjustments, as we mentioned before. There's probably six employees, five or six of us that, well, I think six for sure, of those that would be getting market adjustments whose wages are split between a general fund and other funds, but I mean, just for uh, example, building inspections increased thirteen thousand. Uh, information technology. Well, information technology. Twenty seven thousand. If, if you look at that, there there were some proposals in there for um, software changes and upgrades. So that's part of the uh, IT budget. If you look look in the narrative that came with that. Okay. Um, you know, there's just there's a lot of increases. You know, clerk treasurer twenty six. Right, and some of that is market adjustment. Some of them there was additional training requests in there. Elections um, thirteen. Four. I can speak on clerk treasurer. <laughs> um, in there, there's a six thousand um, dollar item oh, yes. for agenda manager. Uh, the agenda manager that you've been right. using for the last uh, couple months, if you like it, um, we can pay six thousand, and then there would be more of a history for you. 
instead of only being able to access the last two meetings. Yeah. Um, and then we could uh, have other Departments. boards and commissions on there. The other thing is, is that a one time? Is it every six thousand every year then? Every year. Okay. Oh, but but that's and that would be an option if I mean that's what six thousand of it is is because the I mean you know, I know I think people have liked that you know that program and stuff but we've just been using the free one if you will and that only allows us to keep three so potentially we could use it for the other committees as well. I mean nitpicking and judicial. There's professional services uh, from one fifty four to three thousand dollars. You know which one is that? Judicial under other professional. We we actually <laughs> went over budget. I mean not in the not in the final line, but we've been using we've been having to call interpreters more oh. Spanish interpreters and Hmong interpreters. So since since we are paying less for our phone we moved some of that money over to professional services to pay for interpreter fees we also had a guardian ad litem on a juvenile case that was rather expensive so that's where the money came from the phones and went into other professional services thank you on the elections that's an every other year thing because we have four elections next year instead of two 25,000 in parks Parks, that's partially a, a good chunk of that 25000 um, for additional summer help that we discussed earlier. A good chunk of that would go to the parks for mowing and that type of thing. So 83000 in the police department. That's pretty, mu that's pretty much the settlement with the police officers. And then the, you know, there's a little bit of market adjustment there. But you only have two people that are impacted, two positions that would be impacted by that. So the bulk of that is the settlement with the contract. I mean, so I probably rattled off $200,000. And I had given you the breakdown earlier on, you know, what the two percent across the board would be, what the market adjustments would be, and they were between two and a half, three cents each of those things, and then the police settlement. Mm -hmm. But that's all already included in the number I provided you. Oh, well, still overall, I mean, if we were to say a zero and an increase in this stuff, besides the two percent. Yeah. I mean, there's savings. There is savings in be, this budget. Be, if you were not to do the, you're saying not to do the market adjustments? No, I'm sorry, what are you? Keeping the personnel separate. Yes. Okay. There are savings involved. With well, there could be some, I mean, yeah. right. If you would choose not to use the agenda manager, you know, stay with your Google Drive, that would be 6000 right there. I mean, that would be a decision you would have to make. Right. Depends how, I guess, how much you like it. Yeah, that's what that boils down to whether well it's nice i mean but we don't i don't know if we need history a, that would be up to you we just wanted to make that put that proposal out there because it's had a fairly positive response but i mean it might does that make sense brenda I guess. well are you asking us to go back uh through supplies and contractual and see if the 2017 budget compares to the 2018 budget there, there wasn't a lot of increases we can i mean Aside from personnel, and then the, and the things that were spelled out, like their IT spelled out some specific increases, and then the, I think the big one, the clerk treasurer, there was some change in a little bit of training, but the bulk of it was that six thousand yeah. dollar. You know. So really, operations-wise, the departments. I mean, you have in your packet what they asked for above and beyond, and most of them stayed pretty well neutral. So yes, it's personnel costs. And that all, that's always going to be 70 to 80 percent of your increase because that's 70 to 80 percent of your but budget. But it's also the most in our control. Yep. No. So I don't know what are, what are, is there a consensus on that, the program? Whether you feel it's worth 6000 I don't use it. I never have. I never got it installed. We, and it was put in there just because, <laughs> so, you know, people were I mean, if positive. we had to pick something to... To what? It, it just seems like a convenience. It, it, you still use the free one. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. The, the, you just would only have. I just use Perfect Reader like I always have. So. Is yeah, I. That's free. I use it. I like it. I think it's great. Um, I guess I would ask if there's something else out there that's similar, that's less expensive, and then I would also suggest that I don't need it. You know. But I do like it. I think it. it just depends on on how you like receiving your packets in terms of um, administration of your meetings. You know, do you 
the way you were utilizing your package last time before this started, was that sufficient? Were, were you reading your information? Were you able to you know, get access to the information? And I think this provides you an easier route to do so. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only route. But I'm not saying, but I'm not gonna tell you that there's something probably less expensive out there. Because I think that those kinds of softwares all cost money. So, um, so it's just something fine. to think in. I, you know, and if we did, uh, yeah, if we did an um, agenda manager, um, it would be, you know, I think the goal would be to utilize it citywide. Every committee, every commission. Um, so it's all available and it's all there for everyone to use. So, but uh, again, completely up to you guys. Well, um, like I say, I, I find it very beneficial. I like it a lot, but uh, if, you know, very, I don't know how many people use it, and I don't know that it's worth six grand for just for my use. Is I it, use it too, but I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it's nice, but it's not, not necessary. <coughs> We're still using Google Drive. I mean, I gotta and, believe that there is, I gotta believe there's something similar to this out there, though, as some other packages other, that, other yeah. And maybe we ought to investigate that and see what, especially if you're thinking about um, utilization across all committees and stuff. But yeah, I don't know that we need it for six grand. I but think. we can continue to still wear, use it for free, right? Right. You, yes. Oh, okay. Just for the, you'd be able to continue for the, but it'd just be the current agendas as it is. Now. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And then it would get replaced then with the next Works current fine. agenda. Oh, oh, that's great. So we don't have to give it up. Yeah. <laughs> Jim. Yeah, I would say I, I like it because it works much better on my computer than Google Drive. Yeah. As ever will. Yeah. But certainly for current. And we, we still have the ability to go back and have history, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. I, I had to ask someone else to do it for me. But yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's out there but, but yeah, as I said, the history is always out there in Google Drive. Just okay. keep it out there. All right. So that So is that something you'd like us to? I mean, I know it's only one thing, but take out? Yeah, I would. Okay. Absolutely. There. All no, has to start no, with Everything us. is great, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. So uh, where you are right now with the, just so we're on the same page, with a planner, an officer, a s patrol sergeant, the extra 25000 for a seasonal, and, and I did not including IT, I did not, I mean, that's, a, you'll have to tell me about that one. Right now, we are at just under 538 per thousand, assuming the current funding model with EMS. And that's not, and that does not include the half? Does not IT. include the IT. Okay. Um, How much does the IT add? That adds about two and a half cents. Okay. All right, so what, what are we expecting to do here tonight? Well, I would like some recommendations on this, and then what I would do then is put the budget together. We have to get it published. You can change it the night of the budget hearing if you have you know, epiphanies or something that you think we need to do this or don't need to do this. It can be changed that night. But when do you need to publish it? The next, I have to have it, middle of next week, I have to have it to the paper. Because we have to have it published 15 days prior to the public hearing, which is on the 20th of November. So it'll have to be published on November 2nd. So I have to edit next week. So we have till next week. Right, but if- You need for a vote. Just well, for public guess, purpose. Right. But we, we can do it on the 20th. We can make changes on the 20th. You're right, what I'm saying is, depending on what you want to recommend tonight, it would go into the preliminary budget. We get everything published, you'd get your big book. And then the night of the meeting, you could come back and say, oh, well, I thought about it. Add an officer, take this away, whatever. That can be done right up until the time you approve the ordinance okay. that evening. So I guess the question is, what of these so, personnel changes? Yeah, do why don't want? we start with the police? What, uh, we already kind of did a consensus on Mike's position, right? Is that right? Yeah. So police, what, what, what are we thinking? Sergeant and officer, I think, is probably what makes the most sense. I agree. Okay. And the public works, the 25,000? Or yes. Okay. Yeah. And then IT? No. Mm -mm. Hold off. Hold off on that one. Okay. 
and then I'll take the 6,000 out for the agenda manager. Okay. You know, and if there's, as you go through this, if there's specific, you know, the narratives, I, what I asked the department has to do, if there were specific increases above that they should spell them out for you, but if there's things you want me to follow up with the department has, just let me know. You know, if you find a specific line item, why did this go up, or if it's not explained well enough between now and the well, budget if the, hearing. If the IT guys could kind of spell out where they feel like things are falling apart or not right. working well, they, out. There was it, a, a little bit of narrative. It's kind of generic, you know, it's not really, I mean, there's just stuff to do, you know. But, I, but just even in the general operations budget, you know, Brandy brought up a few things tonight, but if you see something, if you could let us know ahead of the yeah. budget hearing so that we're I'll prepared. I'll send emails. Uh, yeah, prepared, so we're prepared to answer instead of, because if you ask us that night, we might not be able to. Okay, so I'll go ahead with what is here then, and then um, we'll get that published. I'll get you, you'll have your budget books. I'll let you know when they're ready. Okay. okay. Thank you for your help. Yeah, thank you for your help. Uh, and thank you, Brenda. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Anybody? Motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Got a motion, second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody.